Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again, back with more Entitled People stories. The title story starts like this. This is a pretty old story, an incident that happened almost two decades ago when I was in my early 40s. So I am the child of an interracial couple, my father is from Saudi Arabia while my mother is from a country in Southeast Asia. Not mentioning the country, because not only did this incident happen here, I also currently live here so I don't want to dox myself. Though I was born in Saudi Arabia, I constantly visited my mom's country. So despite my appearance which leans towards a Middle Eastern man, I am a blend of both cultures and I love them equally. However, my dad passed away when I was 25. My mother decided to shift back to her country so she can be with her parents. After completing my education, I decided to come live with her. At first I helped my mom in overseeing the chain of hotels she owned before with enough funds that I started my own bank. Over time as my business flourished I got married to a sweet Korean woman. I decided to open more branches all over the country. It was during my visit to one of the bank branches that this incident took place. I had opened this particular branch because my wife had relatives in the area and wanted us to move there as well. The area in itself was pretty good so I agreed easily, we found a nice penthouse nearby and did not waste any time in signing the deed. I had even brought money in cash to make sure everything went smoothly but there was no use for it as my uncle knew the police officer of the area and had him overlooking the entire deal. So after handing over the keys to my wife and dropping her off to her relative's place, I decided to visit my bank to put the money back. And yes, I am a customer of my own bank, because why not? I went in with my secretary and handed over the employee on the counter the required slip to deposit the cash. And that was when the problem started. Karen is the employee at the counter. Karen, where is this money? I frowned at her question. I had withdrawn the cash from this bank last week and the bank's manager had been here to greet me. So I was confused as to why she could not recognize me. I bent down to take a look at her and that answered my question. She was not here last week. Not only behind the counter but I'm sure she became an employee this week itself. Me, oh I'm here to deposit the cash. I withdrew it yesterday for a property I was buying but I had no use for it sadly. Karen, yeah. Yeah, sure. I did not like how she shrugged me off but I tried not to let it bother me. If this was really her first week, I could not fault her for being suspicious towards a man with a briefcase full of money. Me, I understand why you might be confused but I assure you this is my money. If you don't believe me, you can go get your manager. He will recognize me. Karen, he has better things to do than entertain the bullcrappery of people like you. And she looked at my attire up and down. To be honest, I was dressed casually that day so I didn't understand what she meant. Now go back to your country and take a bath for God's sake. That caught not only my attention but my secretary's as well. He silently asked me if he should intervene but I waved him off. This was my bank. If I could not handle my own employee then what kind of an owner was I? Also, for all I love my mom's country for, it's true that they had their fair share of racist people. And referring to dark skinned people as dirty was, unfortunately, not an uncommon thinking back then. It still is in some areas. I am not even that dark. Almond brown is the closest color I can describe myself as but I had gotten tanned after coming back from my international business trips. Me, Miss Karen, I saw her name on the tag, I want you to listen carefully. This money right here is mine and I want you to deposit it in my bank account. If you have any problem you can go pay your manager a visit. And if you can't be bothered to do that, I can go visit him by myself. So what option will it be? The Karen looked taken aback and shocked at the comment but it wasn't long before she scowled angrily. Karen, you think you lowlife can talk to me like this? First you come and settle in my country like a leech and now you dare to try to put this fake money in this bank. Let me give you your options, Blackie. She used some slur for dark people but I don't remember. You either tuck your monkey tail between your legs and walk off or I call the police for this fake money you're trying to hide. I could see my secretary itching to intervene but I held him back. At the employee I smiled kindly before turning around. I did not even have to look at her face to know that she was smiling in victory. But bad for her, I simply walked over to the chairs and sat down on it with my legs crossed. Me, well do your worst Miss Karen. Her face turned red and she picked up her phone furiously dialing in the numbers. My secretary came up to sit beside me and whispered, why not tell her that you're the owner? Well, because power bends everyone. 
I knew how she would have treated me once I revealed my status, but what if someone like me, who looked like me, who spoke like me, who didn't have the power like me, came in the next day to deposit money for his family? The treatment that I was getting today, he would get it too. But he'll not be able to find this woman like me, I was lost in these thoughts when I heard footsteps coming towards me. I looked up only to see a briefcase flying towards me. Luckily my secretary caught it before it could hit my face, but it still shook me enough to freeze me in my seat. Karen, this is a criminal officer. This jerk came here and demanded that I deposit his money, but when I asked to check it, he started insulting me and told me that he knows the manager and will have me fired. I could see the other customers look over in interest, but the employees and the guard, apparently the manager was on sick leave that day, are looking at the Karen with anxious faces. The officer himself is frowning in confusion as he was the same officer who I had met only hours ago. Me, nothing like that happened. Do you know I can sue you for slander of my character? The Karen finally looks scared, but she continues to babble on. Karen, look officer, he is still… Me, do you know that if right now the money gets checked and doesn't turn out to be fake, I can sue you for defamation? Karen, you… Me, do you know that the cabin next to you has a microphone fitter that has recorded our conversation? Karen, how? Me, do you know that racist people like you dirty my country's name and give the foreigners here a bad experience? That your bigoted mindset is the reason why some of my friends don't want to live here? I could see that the Karen was close to tears and even some of the employees were feeling uncomfortable. However, these kinds of conversations are always uncomfortable and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have it. Me, people like you have no place in my bank or any for that matter. Get out, you're fired, and I will make sure that no position that requires customer interaction will be given to you. I could see the color draining from her face, an apology on the tip of her tongue, but I am done with all of this. I asked the guard to gather her stuff and escort her out as a different employee deposited my money. Karen cried and begged for forgiveness as if any of it was genuine. The other customers whisper among themselves and I knew that I won't even have to do anything to blacklist her, the gossiping mouse will do the job for me. The racism is not that bad today and incidents like these happen less and less, but this is a reminder that every time we think we have done enough, we should do more because bad mindsets can make a return anytime. And yeah, ripe stars, if you like this story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment if you want to support me. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled Local Revenge. Have you ever worked with someone who you know immediately is really something special? I've had a few opportunities to work with people like this and my first thought is, I want to help this person get wherever it is they are going. So anyway, I worked for a non-profit for a while after retiring from the army. First day on the job, one of my peers on the leadership team pulled me aside and warned me about one of the guys on my team. Jane, you will have to keep a close eye on Willie. He is low effort and takes a lot of hand holding, rubs people the wrong way and honestly, we are considering firing him. Me, thanks for the heads up, you never know what you're getting into at a new position so I appreciate having the info. Damn, what have I walked into? But then I started working closely with Willy and I made some discoveries. Sure, Willy was an introvert, kept to himself and could be a touch socially awkward, but he did indeed knew his job inside and out. He managed my department's logistic requirement precisely, we always had what we needed but never too much excess static stock on hand. He found innovative ways to work with our community partners. He built new initiatives that capitalized on existing resources without incurring additional costs. A very important skill to have in a non-profit. He impressed donors so much that he actually convinced them to contribute significant sums in support of his additional duty department and he was not even part of the fundraising team. Willy was quite the rock star and I quickly realized how lucky I was to have him. Despite all this, the rest of the regional leadership team seemed to have it in for him. I found out later what it was that set them off. Willy had made an offhand comment to Jane about a year before I joined. Nothing sexist or bad, just a casual observation about a physical aspect of the office space that Jane interpreted poorly. She shared it with other leaders in the organization, they decided that the comment made their teeth itch and it became a snowball that quickly rolled over Willie's reputation. The comment was relayed to me by a third party a few months after my arrival. I went and talked to Willie about it directly. I wanted to get his take. Our discussion revealed that it was totally innocuous, but misinterpretation had caused a misunderstanding and the damage was done. Rather than asking questions of Willie to clarify, they assumed a bunch of crap and ran with it. 
The stage was set and Willy had realized that he didn't have a future at our location. Leadership had made up their minds about him and were actively blocking his options when they learned about any moves he was trying to make. I knew of at least three instances where they torpedoed his chances for interviews at other nearby locations in the organization, tripping him before he even got out of the gate. Willy knew that if he was going to advance, it was going to be somewhere else. He started looking for new work and he eventually found something at a another branch of our organization in a different state. He kept it very quiet, got the interview and the other region was assessing the different candidates. The only other person in our region who knew about it was me and that was only because I had spent months gaining Willy's trust. He knew he could confide in me and I would not crap on him. Around that time, Jane hit me up again about Willy. Jane, I'm amazed by the changes in Willy since you came on board. You've done really a lot to mentor him and get him up to his full potential. Me, I've done a lot of work where Willy is concerned. Some of it was helping him with professional development. Hmm. But most of it has been focused on shifting the leadership team's perspective. He's really not that different from when I arrived, but just as you indicated, your perception of him has definitely changed. I have put a lot of effort into just letting him shine, giving him credit for the good things he does and staying out of his way. He didn't need micromanagement, he needed room to run. Every time he achieved something, I made a point of highlighting his success and the benefit it brought to our organization. The work I did was not on him, it was on you. Jane did not know what to answer. Back to Willy though, I asked him if he wanted me to go to bed for him in the hiring process with the other region. He said he would appreciate the help, so I called the manager at the other location and told her that I don't want to lose Willy, but all the reasons why I want him to stay here are the same reasons why you need him there. The problem is, if Willy stays here, the organization is gonna lose him because they won't promote him. I would rather have him stay with the organization in a different place than lose his commitment and skills entirely. She ended up hiring him. Of course, it was all him, skills, experience, interview, she knew she was getting someone amazing. My recommendation was just the icing on the cake made it easier for her to decide what she already knew. Willie's taste of sweet sweet revenge came when the leadership team had to eat crow as they congratulated him on his move. Willie knew this team of leaders had put a lot of effort into making sure he would never advance. Some of their congratulations were less than genuine, including Jane's. The cherry on top was that the pay and position at the new job was half a step above mine and the rest of the leadership team. And that's right, he moved on, he moved up and he outranked us all. A most excellent F you to the folks who had stood in his way. And yeah, ripe stars, that is what I would call brilliant revenge. Good on Willy. Anyway, the next one is titled Credit Revenge. So I just got off the phone with my wife and this story may not be a revenge per se, but nevertheless, it's about 3% revenge at least. Anyway, my wife is at Costco doing the weekly shopping. She is standing in line and the lady in front of her is having issues with her cards not working. She is frantically calling her husband, trying to get it fixed, trying over and over again to use it, but with no luck. She tells the cashier she will just put everything back. My wife being the kind-hearted person she is, start surveying the lady's items by looking at the card. At that moment the lady chimes in, what are you looking at? So my wife, who is not very confrontational, immediately claps back and says, well I was gonna help you out and buy the stuff for you, but not after the way you just talked to me. Apparently this triggered the lady and she stormed off leaving all the items on the belt and in the cart. Lesson here is maybe treat people with respect no matter the circumstances. You never know when you might need help. Yeah, ripe stars, I would 100% agree with that and you never know when karma might bite you in the butt. So therefore, just treat people with kindness and don't be a douchebag, it will make life easier for everybody. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. I live in an apartment building with my wife and my brother. I just want to tell you a little bit about my brother to explain why we have a disabled parking spot for him. Ever since he was born, he was basically told that he would need somebody to help take care of him for the rest of his life. I don't want to go into too many details since that is not the point of the story, but he has both mental and physical disabilities. Sometimes he is in a wheelchair and on rare occasions he is using a walker where stepping is not exactly easy. My parents got too old to take care of him and I was not going to let him go into a home when I was capable, so he lives with us. 
The way our building works is that if you pay and get a pass on your car, then you can park anywhere in the parking lot. There are no assigned spots for people to park in, except right near the front of the door and the spots are assigned and numbered. Due to my brother, we have one of those spots assigned to us as they are legally meant to be spots for disabled residents. The neighborhood has been changing and a few rich snotty people decided to move in within the last couple of years. One guy in particular thinks that he is too good to walk to the front door and wants to have a spot in the front. Of course, he is always told no because he is not disabled and can just pay extra to get one. I know sometimes he sees me without my brother and might have gotten the wrong idea about our spot that way. On the other end, I know that everybody in the building knows about my brother because people can see him and the nature of people is to stare and talk about him. I guess at some point he decided that he could just do anything he wanted and instead of parking somewhere else, he decided to park right in my spot to avoid the rain. Now, this was not the first time he had done this and gotten warned that he cannot. This day was just the worst example of it and the final straw for me with this guy. I was coming home early from work that day to take my brother to an appointment and that is when I saw his shiny Lexus right in my spot. There were no close spots for the meantime and I was angry about it. I ended up double parking in front of the building and going up to get my brother ready and bring him down to avoid the rain as best as I could. I made sure to take pictures of the license plate and car and sent them directly to the building manager. This guy does not mess around and like a lot of people in the building seems to really like my brother. He is the kind of guy that is always smiling and enjoys saying hello to everybody in the elevator while waiting for the doctor, I get a message from the building manager that he tried knocking on the man's door but since he got no answer, he called the police for the illegal parking. He promised me that by the time I got back, his car would either be parked somewhere else or towed away. I seriously just want to shout this guy out because the spot is not labeled as handicap parking so only he could really get it towed away. He was right though and when we got back our spot was empty and we were able to go upstairs. The neighbor did not stop there though and instead cornered me when I was going to my car the next day and screaming that I was going to pay the fines in order to get his car back. I told him that he was out of his mind if he thought that and to get the hell out of my way. I messaged the building manager again because I just wanted to be safe and let him know the guy's response to getting towed. Finally, he did something so horrible that there was nothing he could do to save himself from it. He tried to start a kind of campaign in the building where he would go around trying to get people to sign a petition to the building manager that he wrote. It was basically saying that disabled people should not be given privileges and the building should ban them all together and make it a building only for normal people. Like I said before, the neighbors mostly loved my brother and were disgusted by the fact that they were even getting asked this by the guy. One neighbor told me when I got home even before I could get into the elevator what had happened and I had decided I had enough with this guy and I messaged the building manager what he was doing and went right to his door to confront him. He came into the hall and started yelling at me and calling my brother all kinds of slurs regarding him being disabled. It was disgusting and I was ready to face the consequences and punch him right in the face. Nobody talks about my brother that way and I would end up with a police record if it meant defending him against jerks like my neighbor. Before I could do that though, I saw the building manager coming between the two of us and stopping me from knocking him on the ground unconscious. The building manager started to speak to the neighbor and told him that he knew in the lease agreement that if complaints were filed and building rules were violated that it was grounds for the lease to be terminated. He argued back of course that he did not break any rules and he could not get kicked out of the building. Stealing the parking spot was a violation of the rules which the manager was quick to point out. It turns out that I was not the only person that had been complaining about this neighbor. Once a neighbor had heard his horrible pitch to get rid of my brother, a ton of them messaged or called the building manager to complain. Then he heard all of the things he was saying to me right there and went as far as to call it a hate crime to try and get a disabled man evicted from his home. I went back to my apartment and let him deal with my neighbor and getting him out. 
A few days later there was no trace of him left and he was fully kicked out of the building for the stunts that he had been pulling. And now I have one last thing to worry about since he cannot come and steal my parking spot anymore. I honestly cannot believe that somebody can be so selfish and heartless that they think they are entitled to good parking for no reason and especially taking a handicapped parking spot when they are not disabled. When I go to the store without my brother, I don't park in the handicapped spots because I don't need them. People who don't need them should not think that if they have money, that means they can. There are so many people out there like my brother that get screwed over on a daily basis because of people that acted like my neighbor did. I hope that getting better parking was worth losing your entire home over if you are reading this. And yeah guys, that is exactly what should happen to people who park in handicapped spots if they are not even disabled. Especially when it is rich and titled douchebags. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.